Cool. Alright. Hello, hi everyone, I'm Ben. Uh, if for some reason a black hole were to collide with the Earth, the climate change wouldn't be much of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> but assuming that doesn't happen, uh, we're going to worry about it now. So, uh, yeah, I'm really interested in computational physics as applied to climate change. So, yeah, I'll be tackling the oceanography climate culture project at the University of Concepcion. This photo up here, the more Later channel in Patagonia is, is a good motivator for my project. It's a, a complicated system including glacial fjords, uh, complex shorelines, active volcanoes, and the green streaks in the north uh, are thought to be sediments and plankton. And for one part, we want to understand why or how does this system work? How do all these things interact? And once we understand that, uh, what does that tell us about the climate for Chile? How do we prepare for climate change? And also, how do we prepare throughout the world? So, the picture here is a dried up uh, lagoon in Chile. Uh, it's one symptom of climate change. Uh, in some areas, there's, there's drought. Lakes are drying up in other areas. There's too much water, it's flooding. Uh, but I'll just talk a little bit about each of the effects we're seeing in Chile and throughout Central and South America and climate change. So the most obvious effect uh, is changes in patterns in precipitation and temperature. So rainfall has increased in Southeastern South America by about 0.6 millimeters per day since 1950, but has decreased in Central America and central southern Chile by about a millimeter per day uh, throughout the same time period. And Central and South America have warmed on average by 0.7 degrees Celsius since the mid-1970s. And during that same time period, there's been some cooling off the Chilean coast by about uh, a degree Celsius. So a lot of things are changing uh, temperature-wise and precipitation-wise. and it may or may not be balancing out, but the bigger concern is just that it is changing. Um, this is leading to extreme weather events that uh, certain climates are not used to dealing with. For example, extra precipitation extremes and rainfall and temperature have been recorded in recent years, uh, much more common than we would expect looking back throughout historical records. And climate projections are saying that these trends will only get worse even though there's disagreement on which direction some of these will go, any disruption to the rain cycle to say what have disastrous effects, uh, especially for coastal climates. So another problem is freshwater access. Uh, glaciers in Chile and Patagonia are an important freshwater source here and they're melting, uh, which is not good. And this affects the seasonal distribution of freshwater uh, stream flows. And, and these changes uh, in freshwater runoffs are uh, causing decreases in water in the Andes region, increases in the La Plata River Basin up north, and uh, but this, the decreases in Chile, uh, as well as evaporation in semi-arid regions, uh, is a problem for city water supplies and agricultural water supplies. Especially as many people are facing energy poverty, they'll be without water. So. And water is pretty essential. Uh, another problem is the uh, sea level rising. Uh, since 1950, Central and South American sea levels have been rising at a rate between 2 and 7 millimeters per year, which doesn't seem like much, but this is a huge risk for marine uh, ecosystems, including fishing populations. As Chile, for example, Chile, for example, is very prosperous salmon industry for now. But rising sea levels combined with extreme weather events cause the worst mass mortality of fish and shellfish ever recorded uh, in the coastal waters of Western Patagonia in 2016. 12% uh, of Chilean salmon production was killed. So picture here is uh, a glacier in Patagonia. These are what are melting, contributing to sea level rise. They're melting, causing precipitation that increases sea level rising. I'll touch on that a little more when I talk about the project. Another area of concern is 
deforestation, uh, the Andes, Amazon, and Cerrado, increasingly intensive and extensive agriculture in these areas, but particularly the areas with increased precipitation where agriculture is opening up because it's closing down in other areas with decreasing precipitation. It's putting a lot of stress on these areas and we're losing forests at uh, rates that we can't keep up with. The Amazon deforestation has decreased over the years, but it's still 5,000 kilometers, square kilometers a year are going away. And other areas in South America are not decreasing, but this conversion of natural ecosystems combined with uh, biodiversity loss uh, is contributing to species extinction. And it's predicted that vertebrate species turnover, uh, which is just species replacement or removal from the ecosystem, throughout uh, up to the year 20, 2100 is expected to be 90% in the Andes Mountains. Uh, furthermore, uh, more about agriculture. The uh, increases in temperature and decreases in rainfall in certain areas creates food insecurity in previously agriculturally productive areas. Uh, and in these areas with increased rainfall, agriculture might remain productive or might be flooded out. The only two crops that are projected to remain productive are sugarcane and soy, and they can be used as renewable biofuels, so they'll become even more important as we get away from gas and uh, other fossil fuels. But um, because of this gro expected growth, there's going to be a lot more deforestation in South America, uh, wherever there's still rain happening. So they pose a continued deforestation threat. So, another risk factor is spreading of disease, as we're all now very familiar with. Uh, uh, Climate-related disease spreading processes are associated with respiratory and cardiovascular diseases, parasitic and waterborne diseases such as malaria, cholera, or cholera, viruses, and psychological trauma. And uh, changing climate and decreasing biodiversity factors uh, will favor the evolution of these viruses and disease vectors such as mosquitoes, which will take over when larger species cannot cope with changing environments. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about in regards to climate change, socioeconomic risk factors. Um, poverty in Central and South America creates huge vulnerabilities to the worst effects of climate change. Um, and from 2000, 2000 to the year 2013, a total of 613 extreme weather events affected 53.8 million people, and about 14,000 people were killed, and about 15, 50 billion dollars were lost. And even though Chile, uh, in particular, has one of the highest human development indices, indices in Central and South America, uh, their development on a global scale puts a lot of pressure on them, for, and for, on their land and their resources, wherever it's still <coughs> raining for agricultural purposes, so they have an increasing emissions potential. Uh, so any kind of decision about the environment, the coastal environment in Chile will have an enormous impact on the course of climate change throughout South America, and just an example uh, throughout the world as a coastal country. So, so for this reason, according to the Intergovernmental, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Chile is one of the most vulnerable countries in the world. So all this is motivating my project I'll be working with COPES, the Centro de Investigación en Oceanografica en el Pacifico Sur at the University of Concepcion. Um, atmospheric rivers will be the topic of my study there. Narrow regions of water vapor transport uh, associated with increased precipitation in mid-latitude coastal areas such as Chile. Uh, they're typically a beneficial part of the water cycle. They've been around forever. However, they're increasing in frequency and extremity this is leading to extreme flooding. So the bottom left uh, is a, an example of an atmospheric river. You can see that it uh, kind of stretches across the ocean and tends to land at mid-latitude regions. And those happen about every day in the winter season in Chile. And on the bottom right here, you can see the average number of days with atmospheric rivers per year, as well as the geographic distribution of them, Chile and other mid-latitude coastal areas are hit the hardest. Um, but they bring more precipitation than any other type of storm and are contributing substantially to sea level rise in these areas, which compounds all of the effects of climate change. Uh, so what we want to know really is, 
well, how do atmospheric rivers interact with the Chilean uh, coast? And what does this interaction tell us about the climate here? So, models are predicting that atmospheric rivers will, will increase in frequency as the temperature continues to rise throughout the planet. And this will be a disaster for a couple of reasons, including flooding. Uh, fresh water discharge into the ocean will increase, and this will modify the transfer of sediments and nutrients from land to sea, messing with the ocean ecosystem. Uh, uh, in the Chilean Patagonia, this process of fresh water discharge into the ocean drives coastal stratification, circulation, and this coincidence of atmospheric rivers and mountains leads to increased precipitation compounding the effect of increased precipitation overall from climate change. But this kind of discharge uh, has the potential to destroy the marine ecosystems by creating, by favoring like, harmful algal blooms, such as the ones that caused the mass mortality in 2016. So we can expect a lot more of that. Uh, and the Chilean fishing industry is in serious danger. Um, I'll be working with Dr. Diego Norvez and Dr. Martin Jax, respectfully a oceanographer and climatologist each at the University of Concepcion, and we're going to work together to try to combine coastal ocean and climate effects. Um, but whatever this, however this interaction works, we want to know what can we tell the Chilean government they need to do to prepare. Uh, some specific tasks in mind right off of that will be writing algorithms to identify atmospheric rivers from data sets obtained by COPAS. Um, data sets with water vapor transport. This can speed the utility and analysis of atmospheric river data sets and contribute to real-time forecasting as they'll become more common. It'll, there will be a meteorological application as well. And I'll be designing numerical simulations of freshwater discharge and, mo and simplified models of the Chilean coast. Um, so we can see basically the effect of atmospheric rivers is freshwater discharge and we want to know how badly it will affect water temperature, salinity, stratification, circulation, uh, will the fishing industry survive, and what will uh, pure water supplies look like in the future. And the end result will be a generalized estimate of all of this, all the coastal ocean changes uh, based off these analyzed observations, simulations, and some of the literature, because uh, atmospheric rivers are popular right now in the oceanography community. Mm. But, um, we want to know about short-term climate effects and how we begin mitigating damage right now. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.